I have a unique and extraordinary privilege to welcome Dr. Ken Stein as our scholar in residence this weekend. Um, in, in a couple, of, you know, in an hour or so, we're going to have a formal introduction of Dr. Stein. But right now, I wanted to give you a personal introduction to Dr. Stein. His, I, I took his, I was lucky enough to take his uh, course at Emory University in college, and it, it changed my life. This is the Arab-Israeli conflict, and from the moment. I walked into his classroom, I knew that this was, I, I was in the hands of somebody truly special. And I can't say that I have remained uh, friends or in touch with any other professor, but somehow, <laughs> here all those many years later, Dr. Stein and I have, have stayed very close, and I just knew if I could bring anyone here to share with this congregation who I've grown to love so dearly, it would be Dr. Stein in a heartbeat. And so it, it truly is my honor and pleasure to share uh, his expertise and scholarship of Israel, its origins, um, d foreign policy, diplomacy, uh, all of which we'll, we'll lay out more explicitly uh, in a few moments, but it's my absolute honor and privilege to introduce you to Dr. Ken Stein. Good evening. Shabbat Shalom. Shana Tova. When Joshua and I thought about this back in, I don't know, August, the world was a different place. Uh, he and Rabbi Hal and Rabbi Alex asked me to be here this weekend to share with you some of the collective insights, perhaps, that I've accumulated in 44 years of teaching and standing in front of very fine students like Joshua Jacobs. It was December 10th, 2010, that I wrote his letter of recommendation for early decision two to Emory University. No, I'm not going to read it this evening. <laughs> Rabbi Helen asked me to take five minutes to talk a little bit about Jewish peoplehood, Jewish identity. In the wake of what happened two weeks ago, it is very important to understand what is the stickiness that keeps us together? What is it in the DNA that when I would show up at a synagogue in Prague, someone would come over and say, do you have any place to go for Shabbat dinner? And I'd never met them before. And that repeated itself many times over a long period of time of being lucky to travel. There are four components of my identity, and I think those of us who are Jewish, your identities as well. Maybe we've forgotten some of them, and maybe it's good to remember what they are. Torah Yisrael, Am Yisrael, Eretz Yisrael, and Medinat Yisrael. Not necessarily in a linear continuum, but they've been there for a very long period of time. Torah Yisrael is what we stand on. It's in the closet behind me. It's what guides us or is intended to guide us 
depending upon how much we want to adhere to it or how much we want to forsake it. Sometimes if we do too much of the latter, we get ourselves into some trouble. Am Yisrael is who we are as a people and how we evolved carrying this book under our arms from place to place. For God knows we schlepped this little sucker around with us a good long period of time. The laws, the rules, the traditions, the sources. At age 13, my parents, who came from Germany in 1927 and 1934, may their memory be a blessing, came to this country knowing only English at age 19 respectfully, respectively, and also respectively, and cobbled together a life. At age 13, they took me on a trip to their hometowns in the small villages near Wiesbaden, Frankfurt, Hesse. Still standing in this synagogue, still standing in the village where my mother was from, there was a small structure in the midst of the village in 59. Why was that building still standing after Kristallnacht? Why in November 38 had it not been destroyed? Well, it was too close to the other houses in the city, and if they had fired the synagogue, they would have probably burnt the city as well. On the outside of the synagogue was a stairs going to what was easily the women's section, the loft, and my dad had given me a penknife, and he said, take it up with you. I, you may not need it, but take it with you. I don't think he was expecting me to run into some golem that was going to be sitting upstairs in the, the women's section. Jimmy would opened the door, found an Orana Kodesh that had been rebuilt by, I think, soldiers from Patton's Third Army. Not quite certain. Hey, Dad, should I open it? Yeah, open it. See what's in it. And I found pieces of a Haggadah, a Megillah, several parchments of Torah. And I yelled down to him. I said, what should I do with him? He said, bring him down. So I brought him down. I put him into a, a satchel, a, a, a little plastic bag. I don't think it was a satchel put it in the back of our small Renault Dauphine. And as I did, the villagers around me and around us started congregating. And one woman screamed at the top of her lungs to my father, who I rarely heard speak German at home as I grew up on Long Island. And she yelled, Das gehört dir nicht. It doesn't belong to you. It was at that moment when I look back on why sources and documents and who we are mattered to me, and I think that's pretty much the reason why I chose to be a Middle East historian and a Jewish historian. It was the essence of Am Yisrael, the contents of what was in that Orana Kodesh, that had probably been collected in 43, and I discovered them in 59. Eris Yisrael, of course, is the land of Israel, a place that we have directed our prayer and our attention and our affection for 
hundreds if not th uh, at least a couple thousand years. It's this place on the Eastern Mediterranean, many of you have been, and has come to personify and very much demonstrate the liveliness of what is the Jewish people. In 48, that Eretz Yisrael became a Dinat Yisrael of the state of Israel. Struggling, Jews from the 1880s moving forwards, linked people to the land, created institutions, a small economy, struggled, and put their shoulders behind this notion that self-determination meant everything. And they adopted this song that included the phrase in Hatikva, Lihiot Am Chofshi, the Artsenu, to be a free people. Concluding 75 years of Israel's existence, Israel has shown that it can survive, persevere, and more than that, it can advance society. And last fortnight, we realized that we're not as comfortable as we thought we were. We're not as well situated in defense of ourselves as we thought we were. There will be plenty of inquiry that will go on to discuss what went on, what mistakes were made, how best to not let it happen again, much like the investigation that took place after the 1973 war. Now is not the time to point fingers or recriminations as Israelis get ready, if they're not in the process right now, of actually trying to root out a cancer on their southern border. We're all a little bit anxious, or maybe very anxious, about what the results of this might be. Why are we anxious? We're anxious because we're stuck together because of our belief, because the foundation of what is Torah, of what it means to be Am Yisrael, and what it means to look at and want to return to Eretz Yisrael in order to preserve Medinat Yisrael. We are a people, and we have to stick together more so than ever. And may I encourage all of you, as you think about these four, that you find a way to relearn or learn for the first time where we came from, who we are, so that we know where we're going and we don't take it for granted. You can live in an assimilated world, but we still have to remember our identity. And I'm not arguing that we shouldn't enjoy the virtues of all that we have achieved in Western liberal democracies. I'm asking you please to reach back, to learn more about how we did this and why we need to be prideful for it and why we need to pass it on to the next generation in a true fashion of door to door. Shabbat Shalom.
you, Dr. Stein. It, it, it truly is such an honor to have him this whole weekend. Um, I can't think of a more preeminent scholar of Israel to, to be able to inform us in this time of great uncertainty and fear. Um, so we want to invite everyone to join us for the remaining sessions throughout the weekend. We continue with our